Welcome just outside the campus of Baldwin Wallace University, inside the Rome Athletic Conference, Lou Groza Field, the place to play here for the OAC semifinal here, BW against Ohio Northern. Ohio Northern won in the quarterfinal against Mount Union 14 to seven, and they now have a three hour bus ride all the way up to Berea, just outside of Cleveland, and we have an OAC lacrosse semifinal. Sandy Bishop will do the draw work to start for your Yellow Jackets. My name is Luke Schrader. Welcome to BWYellowJackets.com if you're just joining us. OAC semifinal lacrosse action here in Berea. Facing off for Ohio Northern, it's Preston Victory out there, senior. And Bishop wins it back. And the first possession corralled by Ohio Northern. And now a turnover as Rutowski causes that one, sends it to Randall. And here come the Jackets looking to move it over in the offensive end. That's Declan Tubbs, number 66, holding the rock. He passes off to Kroger. And now the first settled possession for the Yellow Jacket offense. We'll bring out the first midline, Kyler Byerly, Trevor Stevens, and Nick Danowski. Byerly over to Kroger. Now here with Danowski on the near side. Inside Kroger. Kroger with the fake. And a shot and a score. Zach Kroger opens up the score here in the OAC semifinal. 1-0 Jackets. He turned the corner. And the OAC defense... <laughs> on you defense, excuse me, did not shore up there. Got to get a body on Kroger there if you're the on you polar bear defense. An easy first score for the Yellow Jackets as they open up this one. 14 and Roscoff, the LSM on the far side. Violation, Bishop goes a bit early. Here come the polar bear offense for the second time today. Turned it over on their first possession inside and Joe Storner able to corral the save. Releasing the shot was C.J. Moran, excuse me, John Mullen, defensive mid for the Polar Bears, and a successful clear now for B.W. as they bring it over to their offensive end. He scored quickly on the last possession, but these games have been close. They played them twice, similar scores each time. First game was 10 to seven. Pretty sure the second game was also 10 to seven. Correct me if I'm wrong, but. BW offense swinging it around now. There's Kyler Byerly out there with it. Now to Stevens. Stevens will give it a go. Over to Nanowski. He fires and scores. Nick Nanowski sends this game to two to nothing. BW starting out hot early. Nick Nanowski with a pass. From Trevor Stevens. Polar Bears stunned here in the beginning of this OAC semifinal matchup. 2 0 in the first two minutes. Here's Bishop again to do the draw work. Bartos here on the near side with the short stick. Blows on the far side with the long stick. And Sandy is tripped up. No call. Crown balls recovered by Owen Yu. That's Max Christopher. Over to Camaroos now. Manned by Neil Randall. Maroos, the leading goal scorer for the Polar Bears. The senior. Excuse me, I believe he's a fifth year. Yep, Camaroos in his fifth season here with the Polar Bears. Came back for another run, and his playoffs going to define his career. We'll see what he can do out there today. Polar Bear offense swings it around. Another fifth-year senior, Pat Bertheson Leon, inside, and that one hits the back of the net. 
30 seconds left on the shot clock here for this possession. Gosnell has it down on the far side. 12-19 remaining in the first quarter. If you're just joining us, Luke Schradel for BWYellowJackets.com. OAC Lacrosse Semifinal here at Lou Groza Field in Berea. Polar Bears looking to strike back now with Kevin Giles working on Bartos. Giles over to Gosnell. Over to Leon. Driving on Blos. Back out to Shemling. And Maroos couldn't corral the pass. That's a turnover for Cam Maroos and the Polar Bears. BW looking to clear here now. Bartos gets it past the 50. BW number 47 in the nation in clearing percentage. Polar Bears are not ranked. Here's Jake Donowski. Bit windy out there, but otherwise the weather has been pretty calm. Bit chilly, but inside to McMillan. Couldn't put it behind the back. A nice check from the Polar Bear defense as the jacket swinged around. Over to Nanowski. Jake Nanowski jump shot. That one goes wide left. 37 seconds left on the shot clock. Jacket's getting some quality shots here on every possession so far. Here's Kroger. Now to Byerly. He sets up Nick Nanowski. Nanowski down the far side. Had a good angle at a shot there, but he said tipped off an ONU defender. That possession will stay with BW. 20 seconds left on the shot clock. McMillan. Back to Nick Nanowski. He'll work again. Inside. Over to Byerly. Byerly lets it go, and Zafranakis sends it off the side of his cross. BW hit the goalie, so that'll reset the shot clock. Got a full 80 here again for the Yellow Jacket offense. Here's Jake Nanowski. Working on Mullen. Pass GLE. Tough defense from Mullen. Nanowski looking for Kroger, but Kroger can't catch that one. Now Nick again. Inside to McMillan. McMillan couldn't hold on to that one. Polar Bear defense shoring up here after being scored on twice in two minutes at the beginning of this game. Polar Bears getting their footing, but unfortunately a drop pass from Christopher Cranston brings the BW possession right back where it was. Ethan Miller now trots on for the Yellow Jackets. He'll give Nick Nanowski a rest after two long dodges on that possession. Here's Byerly again. Nice move by Byerly, opening up some space, shoots just a bit outside. Now Kroger with a screen from McMillan. Going to make something happen. 9.18 on the first quarter clock. 50 seconds left on the shot clock now. Here's Kroger, one-on-one. -on -one. And Christopher sent him to the ground. Kroger gets back up, fires, and Ethan Miller hits the pipe. Wow, I really thought that one might have went in. And that's a mistake by the referee there. That was a shot, and the BW offense was closest to it, but not the greatest call. Byerly wants that ball back. And Mullen gets away from him. Some nice work by Mullen on the short stick D-mid run. 
Another impressive save by Joe Storner. Shot on the doorsteps, a race by Joe Storner. And here come the Jackets on the break. Now to Tubbs. Tubbs makes his man fall over. Now to Jake, and they'll settle it down here. No, they won't. Jake going right at the net. Flips it to Gunnar McMillan. Oh, my Lord. Gunnar McMillan behind the back. That was crazy. I don't think it gets any better than that. Gunnar McMillan behind the back. With that impressive score, the lead now just three goals, but it seems like the Jackets have been going to work here today. Bishop back out there again, but on you will switch up things at the face-off X. They sent out Chad Calderwood. But BW able to pick up another face-off win. This game was very physical. Both times these teams met the season, but BW so far dominating in this first quarter. Jake Donowski on the far side. Inside, and he scores it. Jake Donowski, the leading goal scorer for the Yellow Jackets, puts in another one here in this playoff run. BW with a four goal lead now. Owen you unable to score so far in this first five minutes of play. Bartos on the near side wing. Blos on the far side with the long stick. And Blos picks up that one for a face-off win for BW. Nice ground ball there by Matthew Rodenhouse to keep things BW way here. As he tries and flips it back out to Jake Nanowski. Nanowski to Kroger. And the offense is set up here for the Yellow Jackets. They've been dominating the possession so far. 
That seemed to have been a focus. Value in the ball. Very important in the sport of lacrosse. As Nanowski drives down the left side. Back to Stevens. Stevens sends it to Kyler. Byerly inside to McMillan. And he tried a little hesitation move. Didn't work. Back out to Stevens. Stevens back into Kroger. And Kroger can't finish that one. The defense holds for the Polar Bears this time. 6.44 on the first quarter clock. If you're just joining us, Luke Schradel for BWYellowJackets.com. And the Polar Bears now with a successful clear. We'll see if they can get a possession going. They've had a few possessions, but they've been all quick shots. Haven't really used up the shot clock much. Here's Shemley. Shemling down the left side. Left alley shot goes wide. Right back to Shemling. Shemling will work on Danowski. Down the lefty alley, and he sprays that one into the back of the net. Shemling picks up the first ONU goal. Polar Bears respond that time. Shemling unassisted. Bishop back out there again. Tubbs able to corral the ground ball and another face-off win for Sandy Bishop. BW working to get the offense on, and Ethan Miller comes on for Sandy Bishop. Interesting looking substitution from the midline. Jake behind the cage, he'll drive inside McMillan. McMillan almost tried to go behind the back again. Over to Ethan Miller. Miller fires and scores. Ethan Miller points at the crowd. BW making a statement in this first quarter. Five to one, your score now. Ethan Miller. Bishop comes out again to run it back. This time, ONU sends out. Victory. They've been switching between Victory and Calderwood. This time Victory gets the best of Bishop. And only you will get an offensive possession now as Gosnell has this one in his cross. Just under five minutes to play here in the first quarter. Bennett Michael with the ball, working on Bartos. Back to Cam Roos. Roos working against Rodenhaus behind the cage. Swings it back up top. They'll give Michael a dodge against Noah Bartos. Driving down the alley, Bartos falls down. Here's Maroos. And that time, Christopher Cranston shot too high. Inside score. That time, Joel Connell drives in with the inside roll and puts it in the bottom right corner. This is a three-point game now. Five to two is the score. 418 remaining in the first quarter. It's been a back and forth first quarter. On you getting some much needed offense going after struggling in the first five minutes to get things going. Now they've come alive here at the end of the first quarter.
Bishop again at the faceoff X. This time they bring out victory. And another win for Bishop as Tubbs with another ground ball. He's having a great game so far in that regard. Substitutions coming on and we'll see the first line midfield again for the Yellow Jacket offense. They've been clicking on all cylinders. Here's Byerly. Byerly around the back of the net. Over to Stevens. Stevens now to Nanowski. Jacket spacing. Well, inside, Nanowski scores again. Nick Nanowski and one. <laughs> I just like saying that. <laughs> That's Jake's second goal, as you heard over the PA there. 3.33 on the first quarter clock, 6-2 to two the score. Are they going to wave this one off? Let's see what the penalty call is here. We'll get it to you as soon as I know it. Goal counted, and BW is now a man up after a push with, push with possession from ONU. That's a 30 second foul. BW six on five for 30 seconds. Nowski over to his brother, back to his younger brother. Here's Byerly inside looking for Stevens. Stevens was pushed into the crease. Ref signaling that he was in the crease. That's obvious, but did he get pushed in? Yes, he did. They said he got pushed in. They'll reset the shot clock. They'll reset everything. But they're only going to be man up for a couple more seconds here. Stevens was pushed into the crease, so still BW possession. Still man up. Nanowski. Now to Stevens. To Ferguson. Ferguson pushes it over to Nowski. And we're all even here. And an Eric pass from Nanowski. That will dribble out of bounds. He was looking for Stevens, and it was just a bit wide. Oh, and you will pick that one up and go with it. That's Ethan Falsone. And there's going to be a penalty call on Gunnar McMillan there. A little bit too aggressive at the midline. And another penalty comes out. That one could have been on Stevens on the far side. So Owen, you will get man up. But they have an extra man. Next possession. Even this possession. And it's free shot now. Still get the possession back. So no turnover. He's going to come out of this shot. Inside. Shot is wide from Kalaramski. And Owen, you wants to make sure they get everything with this free possession. Shemley working on the double team. Jackets are all offside, so that's one of the fouls. They're playing with seven guys on defense right now. High hit, but save on the shot. Joe Storner already playing an incredible game between the pipes for the Yellow Jackets. 151 is on the first quarter clock. We'll see a man up here, maybe two men up. Zebra is still working things out here. BW comes out just one man down.
Okay, so there's two men offsides. That's two 30-second offsides penalties. I'm not sure why they wouldn't have the same player serve that. Now we're 6 feet 3 plus Joe Storner between the pipes. And Gunnar McMillan, Sean Davis, and Ferguson. If you're looking for an OAC playoff score update, JCU beating Otterbein just three to one. And a shot fired and saved by Joel Storner on the three man down. He sends that one all the way back to the ONU side. They'll clear it back again and they'll see another man down possession. And funny enough, this team ranked number 10 in the nation for man down defense. And Storner makes another save. That's why he's been locked down between the pipes on the man down. And here comes Blos on the break. Over to Jake Nasky. Just want to give you a little bit of a score update. That goal we were talking about getting canceled out, it was. Score is 5-2. to two. And Nasky runs around, gets it away. Blos has it. And they're going to have a great time killing this penalty. Because they were supposed to be man down. And Owen Yu needed to go there. Up three men. What a performance by the man down defense unit. Shot clock and game clock are not, excuse me, <laughs> shot clock is off. So here comes Byerly. Over to Kroger. Now to Stevens. 20 seconds left. Stevens inside. Over to Kroger. Kroger to Byerly. Byerly inside move. Looking around. 10 seconds remaining. Over to Nick Nanowski who can't handle that pass. That'll bring us to quarter here at Lou Groza Field. As they give him a shot clock violation, but the quarter should be over. 5-2 to two at the end of the first. No video feed currently, but you can still hear me through the audio here on BWYellowJackets.com. Score is 5-2. We're going to get things going here in the second quarter shortly. Both teams clearing the huddles and getting things ready to go for the second quarter. 15 seconds are up on the clock. 15 minutes are up on the clock.
Bishop, Moran, and Tubbs, the Yellow Jacket face-off unit for the Polar Bears. Falcon, Victory, and Christopher. Bishop wins it forward to himself. Scrum for the ground ball. It's picked up by Owen Yu. And here they come on the offensive end. Inside. And the ball is dropped by O'Connell. Turnover for the Polar Bears. Yellow Jacket possession the other way. 5-2 to two to score if you're just joining us. Luke Schrado here on BWVYellowJackets.com. Storner looking to clear now for the Yellow Jackets. Ten seconds left to clear it. And they get it over the midline. So all good to go with that. And a shovel pass by Rutowski finds Nick Nanowski in stride. Here he comes down the lefty alley. Inside and Kroger can't handle that pass. A good opportunity there for the Yellow Jacket offense on the fast break, but they can't cash in. Polar Bears coming the other way now. Still on their end. Ball is swung back to Stofler, and he can't handle it. BW possession. That's not a great turnover if you're the Polar Bears. Here's Jake Danowski on the near side. He'll drive. And bring it back out. Then go back in again. Here goes Jake Danowski behind the cage. Finds his brother. His brother shoots. And stick side high save by Zafranakis. And McMillan sends in a check. Gets the ball back after the save. But Kroger flips that one nearly out of bounds. Still a scrum for it. McMillan tried to pick it up, flip it back over his back, but they say out of bounds on BW, ONU ball. Polar Bear offense down three. 13 22 remaining in this second quarter. It's Cameroos behind the cage. Now over to O'Connell. Back up top with Shemling. Here comes Maroos out of the box this time, working on Roscoff. Maroos. Now back to O'Connell behind the cage. He'll drive. Back to Leon. Back over to Shemling. Bertelsen Leon will drive. He loses it. Caused turnover by Rutowski, but he's able to recover his own turnover. Shemling on the far side. Finds Maroos. Maroos will work. Shoot and save from Joe Storner again. He's cooking. And that'll be his sixth save of the game. with a successful BW clear now. Nanowski inside to Randall. Randall with a shot. Opportunity that goes. Neil Randall with the bouncer. Neil Randall puts it to six goals now for your Yellow Jackets. Six to two the score. 12-04 remaining in the second quarter. Neil Randall puts the high bouncer into the top left corner. Randall's first goal of the season. And Bishop wins it forward to himself again. And it's corralled by Blos for a BW faceoff win. Tubbs with the one-handed catch, keeping things BW here. Tubbs throws it away. 
chance at the midline, but nothing will happen. And whistle is blown here with an ONU possession coming. Polar Bear offense in the hands of O'Connell. Behind the cage with Cameron Vito. On the far side, working against Jimmy Brown. That's Christopher Cranston. Inside, he'll take a shot. And that one's saved by Joe Storner off the bounce. BW clear the other way. Randall able to get it past the midline after a nice pass from Rutowski. Still looking around for a guy to dump it off to, and he finds McMillan. McMillan will press the numbers here. Kroger will bring it back out as BW settles their offensive possession here in the second quarter. 6-2 to two the score if you're just joining us. 10-45 remaining in the second quarter. McMillan with the ball on his cross. Now to Miller. Now to Jake Brenton. Now to Hunter Bean. Bain working at the top of the key. He'll drive from right to left. Swinging around now behind the cage with Jake Nanowski. He'll drive. Makes a move. Inside jump shot. Saved by Zephyrnakis. Zephyrnakis having an up and down game. Some possessions he's made some good saves. Some that he's just let in. But here come the Polar Bear offense on the break. Cameron Vito takes a shot. But that was wide right. Owen, you had the shot back up. They'll stay with the possession. Camaroos now coming out of the box instead of that attack line. Works on Bryce Moran. Still looking around. Back over to Kevin Giles, who sends that one wide. O'Connell behind the cage, working on Randall. Still has it. Polar Bears will swing it around. Back to Maroos. They want to give the fifth-year senior another run. Maroos makes a move. Lefty shot goes wide. 12 seconds left on the shot clock. Polar Bears are trying to get Cam Roos a good shot here on this possession, but haven't been able to. O'Connell behind the cage on Randall. Nine seconds on the shot clock. O'Connell will drive. Lefty jump shot into the back of the net. And he had a couple words for Joe Storner after as well. This one's going to start heating up. 6-3 to three the score now after a Polar Bear score. O'Connell having himself a game here with two goals now in two quarters. He's a senior out of Fishers, Indiana. Bishop back out to do the faceoff work for BW. Chad Calderwood working for the Polar Bears. Roscoff on the near side wing for BW. Bishop grinding it out of there. And they say push on BW. Owen U ball. Owen U finally getting a couple of possessions in a row to work here. Up top with Bennett Michael. Back behind the cage to O'Connell who scored the last one. 60 seconds left on the shot clock. O'Connell flips it to Gosnell. Back up top with Michael. He'll swing it over to Stroff. Stroff working on Tubbs. 
trough, a bigger guy, working on the smaller tubs. Pass is inside, and that one's intercepted by Neil Randall. Turnover by O'Connell. Neil Randall picks up a cause turnover as the VW defense trying to clear this thing. Joe Storner sends it over to Gunnar McMillan. A nice pass there by Joe Storner to get this clear going. McMillan took some hits and was able to value the ball that time. Still BW session. 7.38 left in the second quarter. BW gets the first line midfield back out there. Again, that's Byerly Stevens and Nick Manowski. Here comes Stevens. Inside. Jake Danowski able to corral that pass that went out of Nick Danowski's stick. Back up top with Stevens. Swings it over to Byerly. Behind the cage, Jake Danowski. Danowski with a screen from Byerly. He's got a short stick on him. Jake Danowski looking to go to work here. Backing his man down. Looking up. Had McMillan. Ball goes to Stevens who rockets that one into the back, back top right corner. It's Trevor Stevens gets it to go. 7-3 now the score. Trevor Stevens scores that one, putting it to 7-3 to with just under seven minutes remaining here in the second quarter. And sideline calling for a hold. They won't get it. And Owen Hugh wins that faceoff. Back behind the cage, Giles. Toss now with it. Over to Giles. And now up top, fifth year senior Pat Berthelsen Leon has it. Him and Camarus will come out of the box now as Joe Connell with The Rock working on Ratowski. Back to Marus. Marus swings it to Giles. Kevin Giles will work one on one against Noah Bartos on the far side behind the cage. He'll drive past GLE. Takes a shot and right into the stick of Joe Storner. Didn't really challenge him there. And BW will get the clear going. They get it to Bartos. Bartos up the 40, up the 50, and a successful clear for BW. As Bartos has it in his cross. BW timeout. Here, they'll get a possession with 5.42 remaining in the second. We'll be right back here on BWYellowJackets.com.
61 seconds on the shot clock for this possession. Jake Panowski has it here on the near side. Second quarter action, OEC semifinal here for men's lacrosse. Byerly has it on the far side. He'll drive. Looking for somebody to dump it off to, but no one was there. He'll bring it back out. Kyler, left-handed shot, right-handed shot goes. Kyler Byerly strumming the guitar. That one goes top left for Kyler Byerly. Used to seeing that type of shot from Byerly. Powerful with the right hand moving to his right. And the lead now five goals, eight to three is the score. 520 remaining here in this first half. If you're just joining us on BWLJackets.com, my name is Luke Schradel. OAC Lacrosse semifinal. Bishop. Not able to win that time off the face-off, and a foul is going to be called on Ethan Miller for a legal body check. He'll be in there for one minute after grazing the neck, most likely. A free possession for the Polar Bears now. O'Connell shoots and a nice save by Joe Stoner. They'll talk over this penalty. I'm assuming we're going to see an illegal body check for one minute on Ethan Miller. That'll leave the Polar Bears six on five for this offensive possession. O'Connell will have it to start the man up. 4.43 remaining in this first half. Cloud cover coming in. We're expecting some rain here in Berea in a little bit. O'Connell. And Blos causes the turnover. This man down defense, number 10 in the nation, they're showing you why. It's because of the Joe Storner and the great long stick play they have. As here goes Kyler Byerly getting a successful clear in for BW. Byerly looking to go to work. Getting rid of this penalty. He'll get it back to Jacob Brenton up top. Brenton, the sophomore out of Marysville, Ohio. Ethan Miller getting ready to come out of the box as soon as this one is cleared. And things come back to all even, but Bain has it as they do come up all even here. Byerly will come out for Ethan Miller who will get a shot on offense this time. Back to Branton. Branton will carry and make a nice move. Looking around. Finds Miller. Miller over to Bain. Bain behind the net with Kroger. Five seconds on the shot clock. Jake Donowski, great shot in the score. Top left. Jake Donowski, that's his third goal. He has a hat trick. brother's third goal, but that's Jake's second. And Keller Fisher out there for the faceoff. He will be working against Chad Calderwood and Roscoff here on the near side wing.
Jackets on a three goal scoring run. Fisher able to win that one, but sends it out of bounds, unfortunately, a turnover for Keller Fisher. And a nice win in front of him. But regardless here, Owen you with possession. Giles has it in his cross as they'll send it over to the far side now. Looking for Giles, but they send it back over to O'Connell who comes over the midline. O'Connell driving on Bartos. Inside, shot goes wide. It's either been a shot wide or a shot saved by Joe Storner in this game. And as Storner able to successfully clear it up to Bartos, he sends it to Tubbs, but Tubbs loses it. Owen you ball, and here they come on the break. Inside, and Rodenhaus able to take that one away. Possession erased by Matthew Rodenhaus. And here comes Richie Roscoff inside the 30. Over to Kroger. Kroger lets one fly. Off the ground, McMillan tries to put it in, but he can't. Full shot clock here after a couple shots on the break. 9 to 3, the score 208 remaining in the half. Score update for John Carroll Otterbein. John Carroll leading that one 5 to 1 at the beginning of the third quarter. Byerly will go to work here on the near side. Over to his right hand. Back to Gunnar McMillan. McMillan's shot's blocked by John Mullen. Mullen able to get in a good spot there to deflect that shot. Otherwise, Gunnar McMillan had a great look. Here's Jake Nanowski with the screen from his brother. Now with the short stick on him, he'll try to drive. Over to Gunnar McMillan. McMillan can't corral that one, but Stevens can. BW ball on offense still. Here's Kyler Byerly, left-handed shot. Hits off with Zaf Zafirakis in. Full shot clock here for BW. Now to Byerly. He swings it far side with Stevens. Stevens didn't like the matchup. He sends it back to Byerly who has a short stick on him. That's John Mullen manning up against Kyler Byerly. Byerly inside to Kroger. Kroger tries to shovel one in, but it went way out of the neighborhood of the net. Byerly will have a chance behind the cage. 57 seconds left on the shot clock. One minute to go in the first half. It's a six goal lead for your Yellow Jackets. And Byerly will get another chance on Mullins. He goes to work. Swings it back to Nanowski. Jake Nanowski shovels and goes wide right. Shot clock still a factor here. Six second separation. Kroger looking around. Finds Jake Nanowski. Nanowski can't corral it. You have to bring it back out. 20 seconds left on this shot clock. Inside, Nanowski free and scores! Jake Nanowski! Give him his hat trick now. 10 to 3 now the score as BW puts things to a 7 goal lead with just 20 seconds remaining in this first half. It's been a completely different story compared to what we saw in these past two matchups for these two teams. Fisher back out there again. He'll work on Calderwood. Bryce Moran here on the near side with the long stick. Declan Tubbs on the far side for the Yellow Jackets. Paul is kicked out by Fisher and recovered by Tubbs for a faceoff win. Tubbs was attempting to push the pace, but Coach Keeley decides to call a timeout and talk things over here. We'll take a time out as well here on Yellow Jackets, DWYellowJackets.com.
17 seconds left here in this first half. BW possession. Stevens with the rock. He'll send it to Nick Nanowski. Nanowski goes to work. 10 seconds left on the game clock. Over to Stevens. Stevens inside. Shot saved. Looked like it was deflected by an ONU defenseman. That'll bring us to halftime here at Ludroza Field on BWYellowJackets.com. We'll be back after halftime. BW leads this one 10-3.
Welcome back to Lou Groves of Field, OAC Lacrosse semifinal playoff action on BWYellowJackets.com. ONU goes early off the, excuse me, Sandy Bishop went early. They reversed the call. Questionable work from the Zebras there as ONU starts out with the first possession of the second half. If you're just joining us, it was an exciting first half. The BW offense was clicking on all cylinders. And the Polar Bears not able to get too many things going as Giles sends that one out of bounds for another Polar Bear turnover. Jacket ball with Neil Randall here on the near side. He'll work up and make a nice move to get it past the midline. Randall's been playing exceptional this season. Had to set out a couple games because of injury, but he's back now and in full power. First line midfield comes out for this first offensive jacket possession. Nick Manowski holds on to it behind the cage now. He'll drive over to his brother. Now to Byerly, Kyler Byerly with the hitch looking around. Move didn't get anybody going there. He'll reset up. Byerly. Gets his guy moving that time. Finds McMillan. McMillan sends that one wide. Had a good look there at the net. Didn't challenge Zafranakis, but that one goes wide. Shot clock won't reset. 28 left on the shot clock. Here's Minowski. Working on the short stick defender. Inside to Kroger. Kroger can't haul it in. It almost dribbled into the net, but Zafirakis able to haul that one in. It can almost go down as a save. As Byerly with a nice one-handed check, but can't pick up the ground ball. Mullen all the way down, and they call a foul on Byerly. Behind the cage. That's Goss now. Over to Bertha Sen Leon. Free possession here for ONU. They get it to Cam Maroos. Maroos, left handed bouncer, saved by Joe Stoner. That one will dribble out of bounds, and Yellow Jackets get there first. Regardless, it's ONU possession. Talked about it a couple times during this broadcast, but this BW man down defense ranked number 10 in the nation. And that's in terms of percentage of the team scoring, obviously. If you're new to lacrosse. During the regular season, these teams met twice. BW won the second time 9-7 and the first time 10-7. So those two games were decided by five goals in total and now BW has a lead bigger than that total. 10 to 3 the score, 12 34 remaining here in the third quarter as Blos tries to take that one away. But the Polar Bear is able to control the possession with 60 seconds left on the shot clock. Giles over to O'Connell. Back to Maroos. Back to O'Connell. O'Connell fires. That one's too high. 50 seconds left now on the shot clock. Roos. Leon sends that one wide. Roos to O'Connell. Now to Berthelis and Leon. Back with Gosnell working on blows. Gosnell. He'll drive and another save by Joe Storner as it reflects off from out of bounds. That'll reset the shot clock. Still owing you possession. Got a couple quality shots on this possession. Working on Jimmy Brown, his birthless and Leon. He'll bring it back out to Giles. Now they'll swing it to Maroos. Maroos will go to work on Randall. Maroos finds Leon. Birthless and Leon sends that one into the top left corner, but Joe Storner keeps it 
out of going in between those pipes. They say Camarus was the closest to it. Trey Keeley disagrees. But here comes Marus working on Randall. Left-handed shot saved by Joe Storner and it reflects out of bounds. Shot clock reset. Eleven seventeen to play in the third. As O'Connell looked to drive, but he was denied by Rodenhaus. Back to Marus. Over to Berthelis and Leon. He'll drive. Inside, behind the back goal, is scored by Joe O'Connell. That one was pretty. 10 to 4 now, the score. And 10.55 remaining here in this third quarter as O'Connell puts in a pretty one. The right handed behind the back is the only thing that could score on Joe Sorter that possession. He made a bunch of saves. But the polar bear is able to control the possession there. Some good shot back up and some smart shots. But the rebounds from Joe Storner was allowing them to keep that alive, kind of. He's got 13 saves, though. 81% save percentage. That is incredible. Joe Storner having a game. Bishop picks up a faceoff win after Roscoff picks it up. And some nice maneuvering by Richie Roscoff as he gets things going on the break. Over to Kroger, now to McMillan. McMillan tried to send it to Jake Danowski, but Zafranakis was there. Owen you with a successful clear. They bring things over to their offensive end where they've been controlling things so far in this third quarter. The only score was that BTB so far in the first five minutes of play in the second half. They'll set up Kalri. He'll swing it. Now to Cranston. Cranston behind the cage with it. Working on Rodenhaus. Swing it to Garonski. And Garonski over to Mitchell. O'Connell scored the last one. Jump shot wide. 16 seconds remaining on the shot clock. Short time here on the shot clock. They want to push it here if you're the Polar Bears. And that time Garonski sends that one out of bounds. Turnover for the Polar Bears on offense that time. Rodenhaus sends it over to Storner and they get the clear going now with 9.20 remaining here in this third quarter. Randall sends it up top to Bain for a successful clear. Hunter Bain will bring it down in the offensive end. GW getting their midfield on as Nanowski drives. Jake Nanowski, shoot and score! Jake Nanowski! Heating up the top left corner. Jake Danowski scores his fourth goal of today. And that one was unassisted. He's been playing a great game. Seven shots. Four goals. Also adds two assists to that total for six points for Jake Danowski, the leading points man. JCU 7-3 against Otterbein. A little bit of an update there. As no one uses it near the BW sideline. They're fired up for that one. Over to Bame. Bame driving, loses it. Can't corral it near the Owen U bench. Turnover.
ONU with another possession here on offense. One to one so far in this quarter, 11 to four in the game, 8.30 to play in the third quarter. Polar Bears bringing in a midline we haven't really seen all game. Here's McClure. He swings it over to CJ Moran. He'll go to work on Jimmy Brown. Moran. Swings it. McClure now. McClure inside. Loses it after a nice body check from Ratowski. But the ball stays with ONU here as Ratowski able to control. Inside. That one goes off the top of the pipe. O'Connell recovers a rebound. A lot of shots bouncing off Joe Storner or the pipe so far in this quarter. Shot wide from O'Connell. And 7 17. Ticks left here on the third quarter clock. Up top with McClure. He'll go to work on Brown. A roll back and a swing. Here as Moran will drive. It's a slide from Ratowski and kicks it back out to O'Connell. 40 seconds left on the shot clock. O'Connell looking to make something happen. He loses it. Neal causes a turnover. And able to recover that time was McClure. And the Polar Bear offense still out there with 22 seconds remaining on this shot clock. Moran will give it another shot on Tubbs. No space to shoot. And he'll swing it. Stroff. The double coming from Ratowski. And the double team works just as planned. Rodenhouse picks up the turnover. And now on the clear are your Yellow Jackets. Rodenhouse loses it. Able to recover and find Jimmy Brown. Nice move there by Matthew Rodenhouse. Strong defensive possession from the Jackets there in the midway point of this third quarter. First line midfield out there again for the Yellow Jacket offense. Byerly with the ball in his cross. Finds Kroger on the doorstep. Kroger pulls it back out. And they now swing to Nick Nanowski. He's got a short stick matchup he likes. Nanowski fires and scores. Nick Nanowski fading away. Bangs that one into the top corner. He had the matchup he wanted and he exploited it. 12 to 4, Jackets lead it by 8 goals. Bishop out again for the faceoff work as the Yellow Jacket lead increases to 8. Collarwood out there against Bishop at the X this time. Bishop kicks it out, but into Polar Bear possession. At the start of the fourth quarter, JCU leading Otterbein in that semifinal, 7-3. It's an interesting margin if you're an OAC lacrosse fan. The winner of that game will face the winner of this game on Saturday. Here is Shemling. Behind the cage now with Gosnell. Gosnell will drive and score into the bottom right corner. That time it was Nick Gosnell, the junior attackman out of Dublin. The 
lead is now just seven goals. And BW will send out Keller Fisher this time to do the faceoff work. Rolling you offense coming alive here in this third quarter. It's where they've scored their most goals. They win the faceoff. And Declan Tubbs was injured on the play. Sure hope he's okay. He's been an important part to this team. The way he's been able to play short stick D mid. We'll take a break here on BWYellowJackets.com for the injury. Gosnell and the Polar Bear offense here again. 4.30 remaining in this third quarter. Up top, shot is wide left from Berthelis and Leon. Gosnell with a screen from Gorowski coming. Up top with Giles. He's working on Sean Davis. Giles driving with the left hand still. Looking for the open man after the double team comes. And the double team able to cause the turnover. And Barto is able to get that one out of there, but can't fully recover it with the one hand. Usually you'd love to stick at that ground ball with two hands and recover it, but that time able to pop out of his cross. So polar bear possession here. 30 seconds on the shot clock. Rounski back there with the rock. He's looking to work on Bartos. And that shot saved by Joe Storner. He's just adding to that save total. 72% save percentage for him so far in this game. And that bouncer goes wide from Birthless in Leon, the fifth year offensive player out of New York. Here comes Gosnell. Shot goes wide right. 66 seconds left on the shot clock. It reset after that ball hit Joe Storner. Here comes Maroos. Maroos, not the greatest pass, but Polar Bear is able to recover, luckily, that time. Giles working on Bartos here on this near side. Shot saved by Joe Storner. Nice look on the doorstep from Giles, but Storner has just been too good. Rodenhouse looking around. Sends it back to Storner who sends it to Ratowski. Ratowski will drive up the far sideline and Complete successful clear for BW. Rutowski hobbles off looking a little bit injured. That's not something you want to see. Here comes Jake Nanowski. Looking around, driving, finds McMillan, but McMillan can't haul that one in. He had a good look if he caught that one. Going you, defense holds strong there. 12 to 5 is still your score. 140 to go here in this third quarter. Full 65 seconds here left on the shot clock as Owen Yu with the second to last possession here of the third quarter, likely. Gosnell behind the cage. 
He'll send it up top. Over to Michael. Bank Michael will be matched up here against Jimmy Brown on this near side. Sweeps across. Blow sends the double team. They swing it around the other way. 25 seconds left on this shot clock, and O'Connell drives in and scores. And they say he wasn't in the crease, but it looked like he was driving and jumped in there. Be interesting to see if we had the goal mouth at this level, if that would have been a goal or not. But here we are in a six goal game now with 50 seconds left in this third quarter. Things getting interesting as Polar Bear is going on sort of a run here in this third quarter. They've been, they've been good here in this third quarter, but not great. And now they have the lead in this third quarter. It's, it's a three to two quarter, but a six goal lead here for BW as Fisher not able to win that face off. Polar Bear is getting some type of momentum here late in this third quarter. They've been really moving things through O'Connell. That's who's been the most successful in offense. BW has come in with the idea that they're going to stop Camaroos, but he scores that one. Camaroos sends this to a five-goal game. A shot that had a lot of velocity. They've been able to stop him up to that point. He's their leading goal scorer. And he had been locked up up to that point. He was able to f find himself free there, hands free, and great shot opportunity, able to cash in. Bishop back out there again at the faceoff X. This game's getting even closer as we near the end of this third quarter. Five goal game if you're just joining us here on BWLJackets.com. Faceoff violation there on Sandy Bishop as he goes a bit early. There have been a lot of calls at the faceoff X today. That's been an emphasis for these zebras. I'm not sure why. There comes Shemlin. It's got to be a ward, and they call that one. Can't stick your free hand out and play it like a stiff arm in this game. But passes thrown up the midline and a shot will end the third quarter. It's a five goal lead for the Yellow Jackets as we enter the fourth quarter at this OEC playoff semifinal. We'll be right back here on BWYellowJackets.com. Fourth quarter OAC semifinal action starts now. 12 to 7 the score. The Yellow Jackets lead it by five here at the outset of this fourth quarter. Bishop able to win it forward to himself. He recovers. Hands it off to Kroger. Kroger has been 
quiet in this game. Only one goal and one assist. He's had some opportunities. As VW brings out the first line midfield. Nick Danowski here on this near side will go to work on the short stick matchup. Inside over to Kroger. Kroger to Byerly. Byerly inside. Left-handed shot. Gets it to go. Kyler Byerly gets the BW offense going again. They needed that one. Three goals in a row by Owen Yu and able to respond at the outset of the fourth quarter. That's important for this team moving forward. Finally able to get things going to start the fourth. And Bishop out there again to do the faceoff work. He's working against Calderwood still. They've gone with Calderwood most of these times and really changed up from using victory in that first half. There's got to be a call there. Bishop, Bishop not feeling too good after that one. I mean, he got sat on. There's, there's got to be a call there. And um, Bishop will come off after that. And <laughs> BW will have possession here. And Harley has it again after his score. It's his second. Uh, just five shots. He's had some good looks today. Here's Nick Nanowski. Behind the cage with Kroger. Kroger back to Byerly. Byerly wants to score again. Makes a move. And they send the double team quicker that time. Over to Nick Nanowski. Fades away behind the cage. He'll swing it around. Jake Danowski likes that short stick matchup. Inside, Kroger. Over to McMillan, but McMillan was covered and turns it over. On the clear now. Wow, what a nice ride there by Gunnar McMillan, making things tough on that ONU defense to clear the, the ball. And that time, successful. So the offense comes out with a full shot clock now with a six goal lead for BW. Over to Byerly. Back to Nick Nanowski. 60 seconds left here on this shot clock. Just two minutes have ticked off here in this fourth quarter. 12.50 to play. Here's Trevor Stevens working on the short stick. A nice pass inside finds McMillan, but he can't corral it. Owen Yu trying to clear. And they are successful in doing so. And now the polar bear offense coming out here in the fourth quarter for the first time. Trying to bring Maroos out of the box. I'm going to get him in the game. Look for the Polar Bears to go to him late in this game. He's their fifth-year senior leader. He's their points leader. But Kevin Giles working on Bartos on that far side. Shot saved by Joe Storner low. And Storner just not letting anything through those pipes. That's his 16th save. And that's a successful clear as Neil Randall has it. Anowski not challenged by Shemling there. He'll get a screen from Randall. And they switch. Swinging around now. BW looking to settle things down. They get Jacob Branton out of the midline there. And the old middy's all on, ready to go. 35 seconds left on the shot clock. And Branton will get a chance to dodge down this right-handed alley. 
Swings it back to Kroger behind the net, and he finds Ethan Miller. And Miller dribbles one in. Ethan Miller. That's textbook offense there from the Yellow Jackets. And they get another score. 14 to 7 now is the lead. EW's come out strong in this fourth quarter. Kroger doing a nice job behind the cage, keeping his eyes up, finding the open man. Just under 11 minutes to play here at Lou Groza Field. If you're just joining us on BWYellowJackets.com, the Jackets have played a great game in this semifinal so far, not really letting ONU come in and challenge them at any point, but ONU has gone on a couple runs. They went on that three-goal run at the end of the third quarter, coming alive, but then BW shut that down with the first two goals of the fourth quarter. Now here we are, 14-7. to Face-off win by Calderwood. Dosnell behind the cage over to O'Connell. O'Connell having quite the nice game. He had that behind-the-back goal that started the ONU third-quarter run. Nothing came of that, though. Behind the cage. O'Connell working on Rodenhaus. On the drive, Jimmy Brown able to cause a turnover. Nice check by Jimmy Brown. Here comes Matt Rodenhaus on the break. He's able to find Jake Danowski. They'll slow things down as it's and all BW in this fourth quarter. And now we're under 10 minutes to play. Nick Danowski barking out signals here on this near side 30. BW looking to possess now. They have a large lead here in this fourth quarter. Not taking too many chances, but here's Barley wide open. Let's it fly, but saved. It's like he got a check to the midsection. And they'll swing it back up to Stevens. Now to Byerly. Back to Stevens. Those two playing off each other there on that far side. Stevens will give it a go, loses it. Able to drive still and pick up the penalty as well. Over to Byerly. Byerly lets it fly. Splash. Kyler Byerly into the back of the net. 15 to 7 now the score. Jackets lead increasing as this fourth quarter ticks down. work by the Jackets there on offense and that's their three goal run of their own here at the beginning of this fourth quarter. ONU started that type of run at the end of the third quarter. They had three goals to end that third quarter. Making things close to start the fourth. But BW responded here at the beginning of this fourth with three goals in a row. Two from Kyler Byerly. Bishop, looking to get it out of the mid, and he does, Roscoff able to recover the ground ball there that time, and Miller and the BW offense will slow down here as they have a large lead at the end of this one, not trying to make too many mistakes, they haven't made too many mistakes in this game, only 13 turnovers compared to ONU 17. And one thing I want to touch on as well is that BW has been playing great on that man-up defense. Five opportunities for ONU all come up scoreless. And wow, that was almost a highlight that you would be seeing on SportsCenter. 
and Scrum. Ball sent away, luckily. Not sure what some extracurriculars going on. Has to be a call there. And he sends it the other way. Not sure I agree with that. Looked like the defender had a grab on Jake Danowski's leg. Can't really do that. Here comes the polar bear offense. Mullen. Behind the cage. Trying to make something happen. Season on the line for the Polar Bears here in the last seven minutes. Over to Gosnell. Gosnell will take it behind the cage and drive. 45 seconds left on the shot clock. Kevin Giles will get a long dodge here on this near side. Sweeps across the middle and shoots wide left. I want you back up there. They keep possession. 30 seconds on that shot clock. Face dodge and a turnover as Ratowski able to cause that one. Crowd wanted to push with possession. Didn't get it. And Owen Hughes stays on offense with five seconds left on the shot clock. Inside, score! That time, Berthelis and Leon able to capitalize. Shot clock was winding down, and Owen Hughes had to come up with something, and they do. Still a, still a seven goal game. So, a big, big lead here for BW, but it's never out of question especially in the playoffs. Face-off win for BW, and Bloss able to find a nice pass to Kroger. And a settled possession coming now for BW on offense. Swung over to Jake Nanowski here on this near side. Kroger behind the cage. Swings it to McMillan, now to Stevens. Up top here with Nick Nanowski, back to Trevor Stevens. He'll go to work. Finds Kroger inside. Kroger shoots and scores! Zach Kroger. That's his fourth point of the day, his second goal. Zach Kroger, he's been playing well and also wanted to mention his national prowess. He, he is currently number 13 in the nation in shot percentage at 56%. This game will put him even higher. McMillan also on that list. JCU picking up the win against Otterbein 10-3. So that's who will face the winner of this game. And John Carroll the two seed. You gotta be the one seed, so if figuratively this team were to win, this game would be played here at Lou Groza Field. And that game would be for the OEC Championship and a trip to the NCAA Tournament. Jake Nanowski with the screen from Bartos. He'll work inside. One handed shovel over to Kroger. Right back to Nanowski. He'll send it to Schulte. Rock up top with Ethan Miller now. He'll work down the left-handed alley. 
over to Jake Podowski. Shovels and almost went in off the pipe. Got a goalie switch for ONU as well. They are going with number 53, Cameron Smith, Carson Smith, excuse me. Two year letter winner. Hasn't really seen any time as Efrenakis has been their main guy, but really didn't have too great of a game tonight. 44% save percentage, not exactly what you're looking for. Joe Storner, on the other hand, though, exactly what you're looking for with 16 saves and 66% save percentage. That's incredible. O'Connell, he'll drive. Shots deflected by Ratowski, and he went down. We'll take a timeout for injury right here on BWYellowJackets.com. you on offense here under four minutes to play shot goes wide left from Goss now O'Connell will give it a go behind the cage rolls back shoots and scores O'Connell he's having himself a game trying to get this ONU team going here but that deficit Still just a little bit too big here with three minutes left. Nothing's too comfortable for the Jackets, though. Bishop comes out for the faceoff work, along with Calderwood on the other side. Still a seven-goal margin. And Calderwood able to win it forward to himself, but can't pick up the ground ball. Roscoff tried to grab that one, but O'Connell there this time. Here's Giles. Giles lets it fly into the top left corner. A little bit of a run here from ONU. Still time left on the clock. 3.23 left. And Giles able to score his first one of this contest. The main goal scorer for, for ONU has been Joe, Joe O'Connell. He has five. Everybody else not really helping him out. They have a couple guys with one goal, but nobody else is really shown out other than O'Connell. For BW, it's been Jake Danowski. He has six points, four goals, two assists. Kyler Byerly has a hat trick as well. Ground ball still out there for grabs as Keller Fisher able to pick up a face-off win. Gets double teamed on the out-of-bounds line and steps out. And a flag is thrown. They're going to call delay a game on Keller Fisher. He threw it all the way down to the other end. I'm not sure if you can call a flag on that, though. That's usually a possession foul. They could call a player conduct, and that would be a 30-second foul. That's the only thing I could see them calling here. a 30 second delay a game penalty but we'll go down as player conduct in my book 
Timeout, BW. We'll take one as well. Tonight's OAC semifinal game is being brought to you by Cleveland Clinic Sports Medicine, the healthcare provider for BW Athletics, Dan Andrews and Olympic Forest Products, a global recycling company, and the Oswald Company for all of your insurance and risk management needs. Shot scored by O'Connell. It's a five-goal game, folks. Three minutes to play, five-goal game. O'Connell puts in his sixth goal, and Keller Fisher comes out for another face-off. This game has gotten uncomfortably close for the Yellow Jackets, but still a five-goal deficit. Fisher, not able to win that time. Calderwood wins for the third time in a row. Mullen on the sideline, evades a double team. Some nice work from John Mullen. Their season's on the line. They're playing hard in this fourth quarter. Here's O'Connell. He'll go to work. Looking around. Finds his man. And he scores. Josh Foster, the senior. And we'll put in the goal. And this is a four-goal game now. This is a... A incredible run here for Mo and you, but something I was not expecting. It's another three goal run. They had a three goal run to end the third. BW was able to stop that at the outset of the fourth. Without that three goal run at the start of the fourth quarter, you would be looking at a one goal game here with two minutes, 30 seconds left. Here's Bishop, working on Calderwood, looking for a win here at the faceoff X. Calderwood wins it, and wins it forward. In great possession, finds O'Connell. O'Connell, fumbling with it, but they say timeout, Owen U. Tonight's OEC Tournament semifinal game is being brought to you by Santos Italian Restaurant in Middleburg Heights, a family-owned and operated restaurant for 35 years, and American International. When you require a company with proven performance, rely on American International. Here at Lou Grows the Field, my name is Luke Schradel for BWYellowJackets.com. It's gotten a bit close here at the end of this fourth quarter. It's been a, quite the run by the Polar Bears. They've been impressive. O'Connell in particular has been impressive. We've seen some changes in personnel from ONU that have led to this lead. Or not lead, excuse me, run. And that's a four goal run to be exact. Storner now down to just a 58% save percentage. He was all the way up at 81% at one point. But Joe O'Connell has led the way for the Polar Bears offense. And they're just within four goals now. He 
go to work on Roden House if you're on this near side. On the far side, that's the fifth year senior. Leon. He sends one wide. Behind the cage now, Gosnell quickly drives up. Over to O'Connell now. He goes to work on Roden House. Shot goes wide. Not a bad look, but a low to low shot. Joe Sorner's been great against those tonight. That one didn't give him a challenge, but only you were able to back up that one. Just under two minutes to play. Berthelis and Leon. Fires right off the chest of Joe Storner. That's another save for him. 140 to play. Full shot clock after that shot. And oh, Giles sends that one wide after coming up strong on top of GLE. But here's O'Connell. O'Connell looking to make something happen. One minute, 30 seconds to play in this game. O'Connell tries to be flashy, but Joe Storner always there in the back of those pipes. Excuse me, in front of those pipes. Hasn't really lent in a lot today. And he will be able to successfully clear it past the midline. Two second difference between game clock and shot clock. Here's Byerly. He should be able to run out the rest of this clock. He's got some speed on him. Double team coming. Byerly escapes to his right. Not able to find Nick Manowski, so only will get another run here with just above 30 seconds to play. Shot clock is now off. And Giles really not running with some pace. Finds Maroos, but Maroos can't haul it in. Bartos secures the ground ball, and this one is all but over. 10 seconds left on the clock. Bartos looking around, able to swing it up to Moran. Moran over to Jake Danowski, and that's the game, folks. The BW Yellow Jacket lacrosse team is advancing to the OAC Finals. The OAC Championship will be played on Saturday at the toe here, Lou Groza's field. And the Rome Athletic Conference Complex will see that game here Saturday. And that game will be against John Carroll. For Luke Tradle on BWLJacketSports.com, I hope you enjoyed. This was an enjoyable game from both sides. Offenses got going and made things interesting. We'll see you next time. We'll see you for the championship game on Saturday.